Good morning. I want to talk about a few concepts in Chapter 3 that tend to confuse a lot of my students. In the 25 years I've taught, I would say Chapter 3 is the chapter that more students get confused on the exam. So I want to go through a few concepts with you. I know it may be hard to see the graphs, but you'll be able to hear my voice and hopefully um, get a little bit better idea of what Chapter 3 is talking about. And again, I encourage you, if you get confused, email me. Uh, let me know. I'll try to help you any way I can to make it easier for you. I know many of you are working and you're trying to get your degree, and I'm paid to help you, and I want to do that. So if you're still confused, you just shoot me an email and say, I am still totally lost, and I will try any way I can to help you. The concepts that most students get confused um, are the difference between law of demand and law of supply and shifts in demand and shifts in supply. So let's start, let's start by talking about law of demand. Law of demand says as price increases, quantity demanded decreases. As price decreases, quantity demanded increases. So we're talking about a negative or inverse relationship. So I've drawn one out for you, and I'm going to just kind of leave it up here for just a second. I always tell my students, when in doubt, draw it out. It will really, really help you. Um, have a piece of paper when you take the exams. The top one, I've drawn out for you the law of demand. Okay, Price increases, quantity demanded decreases. So let's talk about orange juice. I start out at a dollar, buying five bottles. If price increases to two dollars, look what happens. I'm only buying one. Law of demand. If price decreases, that's a downward movement, I'm going to buy more. Okay. Remember, demand is talking about the consumer. The consumer. You and I in Walmart or Kroger. Okay. And how we react to changes in price. The price of one particular good will never, ever, 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 ever shift the curve. It will represent a movement along the curve. Now the book is going to list several things that will shift the entire curve. Increase is a rightward shift. Some books call it an outward or an upward. A decrease in demand is going to be a leftward, inward, downward movement back towards zero. Some of these are going to be tastes and preferences, income, um, expectations of consumers. For example, if I think the price of Mac computers are going to be 50% off at Christmas, I'm not going to demand a Mac today. I'm going to wait. So demand right now would decrease. Demand at Christmas would increase. Substitute goods and complementary goods. These are all things that will shift the curve. Alright, supply curve is going to be the opposite. Let me show you that one. Okay, that is an upward sloping curve. That's the corporate side of things. What do we know corporations want to do? They want to make a profit, don't they? So price increases, quantity supplied increases. Price decreases, quantity supplied decreases. I'm going to draw them the same way. Okay, if we start out with five bottles of orange juice and one dollar. And we have a price increase to two. I'm going to demand a greater quantity. It's going to be an upward movement. Okay, go up here to two dollars. What happens? I'm supplying more. If a price decreases, it's a downward movement. What happens? Quantity supplied decreases. Okay, now we can also have shifts in supply. Some of the factors that shift supply are going to be taxes, input costs, in other words, the raw materials that you use. Um, let's say you make Captain Crunch cereal, and sugar is a huge input. Um, on your Pepsi, and you make Mountain Dew, and there's about 40 teaspoons of sugar in that. Um, and the price of sugar triples. I might not supply as much right now. I may pull back and see if the market or commodity prices will settle. So how do I draw that? Well, it's the same idea, except we're going to have that upward sloping supply curve. If I have an increase in supply, 
It's a rightward shift out towards a greater Q. Okay? If I have a decrease in supply, it's a leftward shift back towards my origin of zero. Okay? For example, if the government decided to decrease corporate taxes, in other words, make corporations want to grow, maybe hire more people in this tight economy, if they cut my taxes back, I might increase supply. I might produce more. I might expand my business. Okay? If they raised my taxes, I would shift my supply curve inward. I would decrease for a while, maybe hold off and see what was going to happen in all the politics going on right now. So again, these are the concepts that gonna, are really going to kind of confuse you a lot. The practice quiz questions in the book are very good, and I've assigned some homework questions. If you get confused on them, please let me know. I can't help you unless I know that you're confused. Take care, and the next lecture is going to be on price ceilings and price floors. It's a little bit shorter, um, but I think you'll understand this concept a little easier. Take care and have a good day.